He got to get out and wait now, too. How old is he? 59. How much money is he making? <laughs> he might make $30 this week. What about the machines? They doing that. I think we got five, it's five or six running now, picking cat on this plate. Has that put a lot of people out of work? Sure do. Sure do. I tell you, it just put, it's just put them all out, all out of work. On this place, skewing the tractor ball. Show sure him. Ain't nothing for him to do. For everything that they picked for two dollars or three dollars a hundred, I could have done the same thing with this machine and and picked for nothing. Plus, let's not deal in numbers. Let's deal in percentages. Uh, for instance. I would say that just this year, my workforce was reduced about 50%. And yet I was able to handle the entire operation uh, much easier than I had in the past. But primarily because of the use of these chemicals that we use in weed control. This has been the real breakthrough in the farm area and the elimination of, of this handwork is the chemicals that have come along. And I don't argue the fact that this wasn't, uh, that they should have this money but it's still an economic fact that I have got to make a profit as well. Here are two machines that sell for $20,000 a piece. So like any other businessman, I think when the time comes, we try to eliminate as many of our expenses as we have and try to increase that profit margin. Do you own this house you're living? No, no. Uh-uh. This is Mr. Pete's house. Mm-hmm. Sigmund's plantation is in Clarksdale, a typical Delta town with little industry. Negroes in the county outnumber the whites by three to one. Looks like we're going to be able to continue to operate uh, uh, and operate with less people. And of course, being selfish, all of us, thinking in terms of our own desires, uh, uh, Yes, we're concerned about these people, but we're concerned mostly about number one. Well, I'm going to be able to continue to farm and pick cattle and continue to put it on the market. I, I'm concerned personally with the people that live and work with me, and I, I think most people are, some of course more than others. Um, but you, you sometimes, sometimes you become immune to it. going to change? I believe it is. I believe it. And I'm hoping it do. What do you think is going to change it? Maybe it'll be so, Reena, I believe it's going to change. Maybe it'll be so we can work. Uh -huh. Maybe we'll get a chance to work some. You know, when a person can work and make his own money, he can spend it like he want to, can't he? Uh -huh. You have a great deal of respect for work. <laughs> That's the only way you can get anything is work, ain't it? I done worked and got 55 years old and ain't got nothing, ain't it? That look like it's a fool. <laughs> look like it's a fool in working, don't it? I been working, done got 55 years old and ain't got a thing. The man would come here now and tell me, Helen, get out of my house. I wouldn't have a tent to go put on, get under the, put my cheery on. Now, it don't look like work's good to eat, do it? No, it ain't. I just, I done found it out. Look like I ought to be done found it out. The more you work, the less you have. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing, and I ain't, I ain't working. I'm still getting a little something to eat. I got on pretty good old clothes. So it, it just don't make no difference. It just don't make sense. <laughs> having worked all your life and not having any money at all, uh -uh. does that make you feel bad? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure do. You don't know nothing about working, do you? Do you? I work. <laughs> do you know anything about cotton? Uh-uh. It's the hard work? Sure is. Yeah. It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. And uh, the place I live on, they, they're not hiring any, anybody. 
because they said they were going to get the cat out with the machine. I just don't understand how the people going to live through the winter that's, that's living on the place. I don't understand it because now they're like older people. So they ain't doing anything. Some of them older people are even having checks to live by. It's going to be tough. That's, that's right. right. Sure, you're that's trapped right. in a right. way. You're trapped. That's right. That's the, that was a key word. That's the key word, all right. You're there. Trapped uh, yet hoping poor, for the better. people is more or less trapped here because he don't, if he has families and things to take care of, so little as he makes, he don't, he don't gain enough to, to go to other, other, other places where there may be jobs and things. And then still he has to have, uh, he has to have money when he gets to them places. I think colored man should have a chance to still make a living on this land. Because I just don't understand why it all belonged to the white man. So much uh, about it, I don't understand. How can he become to own something that wasn't his from the beginning? I don't know how and why. Since he didn't, he didn't cultivate it all by himself and uh, whatever it was that, that causes him to be rich now, well, he didn't do that all by himself. Well, I think that he should share it. I tell you a lot, I tell you another reason why we should share some of it, because, it, uh, just, just, they say their people fought and died for this young man. Well, some of our people did the same thing. Our men went and fought and died for this land just as well, so as they is and did. Once upon a time, there was no machinery. And Negroes went into these lands, into these, uh, say, woods and buyers, and they, cl they cleared away all these places. And uh, then so many years, they work for nothing, simply nothing. And the rich man, white man, he gotten rich. So I figure uh, the black man should, should have a uh, chance to make a decent living. Throughout the Delta this year, more than 50,000 Negroes had no work. The system which their labor once created, but over which they had no control, left them with no skills and no place else to go. Most remained in shacks on the farm. The most powerful members of the white community have not encouraged industry to come to the Delta. For one thing, industry would drive up wages. White conservatives think the best solution is for the unemployed Negro to leave the South. Chief spokesman for the conservatives is a lawyer in Clarksdale named Sims Luckett. I don't think that there is any true future for the Negro in this community or the white per per persons in this community or the white people in this community unless and until we change the racial ratio. If we had, uh, if half the Negroes in this community left tomorrow, the ones that were left behind would benefit immensely. In the first place, you wouldn't have what you would call a labor market. You wouldn't have so many uh, people competing for the same jobs. You wouldn't have such a drain upon the welfare roads or upon the public facilities that are, that, that are presented by this large number of people who are not making a substantial contribution to the, we'll say, the tax structure, the financial uh, place that has to be raised in order to meet these requirements of everyday living. But if we did have a manageable proportion of Negroes in this community, the whites would be better off and the Negroes would be better off. We've got to distribute the Negroes more e evenly throughout the country. I do not think that the cities can survive where the Negroes become dominant insofar as numbers are concerned. Nor do I think that the South can survive if we continue on with the ratio that we have at the present time. If a young Negro boy would come into my office and ask for my advice, I would tell him to leave Mississippi and to go to some town of about 50,000 population. Most of the towns like that, up north where their industry, they have very few Negroes. He would 
could work himself into a good job, he would have a good life, and he would not be uh, subjected to the sort of uh, environment that uh, evidently has developed in these ghettos of the north. I know my sons are in Chicago. They say they wouldn't come back here for nothing. No, they've been begging me. I talked to one of them last Tuesday, it was. He want me to come up there and stay a while with me, you know, stay a while with me. I told him I was coming. Then I went back and told him no. <laughs> mm-hmm, this is a Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been here all my days. Done got old now. I, I just... Town is for young people. Town just too fast for older people like me. See? Ain't nothing I can do in town. Nothing but just get killed. That's all. Hey, this is the best place for old people, ain't it? Well, this is to the president. I would like for you to help us down here in Mississippi. We are not surviving a little bit. There are children hungry, and people are not getting a decent living. And I know it is in your power that if you can send help. 